Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover how to use the Mix Console in Cubase 12. With this, we'll go over how to use the Mix Console for tools like faders, panning, and adding insert effects. This will allow us to apply all sorts of VST audio effects to our tracks for limitless options with our mixing. If you're new to this series, make sure to check out the rest of our videos we've created so far, where we went over Cubase 12 as setup and layout, and recording audio and editing MIDI. For our project, we're going to start with a few tracks that have already been recorded. I've got some percussion, bass, and synth tracks recorded so far. This is done using the techniques that we looked at in the last videos. I had recorded a guitar track earlier, but since cut that to demonstrate the amp simulation tools in Cubase 12 later on. I'll start with everything set to the default settings in the Mix Console. The first thing to cover is how to open up the Mix Console. The Mix Console can be viewed in Cubase 12 by opening the bottom zone from the top right and switching the tab at the bottom of the screen to Mix Console. The Mix Console can also be opened from the Studio menu at the top by clicking and selecting Mix Console. This will create a new window with a more detailed look. All these options are available in the bottom zone, but this gives us more options for visibility all at once. It's also great if you're working with a multi-monitor setup. I'll start with setting up the bottom zone mix console in case you want to use that, but then switch over to the window mode so that we can see everything together. Open the mix console and click and drag the top to expand it upwards. Start by using the three dots in the top left to view the toolbar at the top so we can see where the controls are. Then use the gear on the top right to make sure everything is visible. In the first view, we have all our faders. There's also a view for inserts and sends. We can switch between the faders, inserts, and sends with the three buttons along the left side. Now let's go to the Studio menu, Mix Console view, and make it full screen. We can look over the Mix Console in detail from here. From the Mix Console window, again we get a gear in the top right to show all the controls in the panel at the top. Let's show all to get started. This is quite similar to the main project view that we're already familiar with. We have our undo and redo buttons on the left. Then we can save a snapshot and load a snapshot of the mix console to be able to adjust mixes and go back and try a different mix if we just don't like it. That will allow us to switch between multiple mixes that we can create. Moving on to the right, we have the search for track button and some configuration tools to choose which tracks display. One thing I'll do when I start editing is turn off input channels. We don't need these once we start our final mix. Next are the locator positions, locator duration, transport tools, time display, markers, global mute and solo, and bypass controls to turn off all inserts, equalization, channel strips, and sends. The next tools are used to link channels, suspend linking, and enable absolute value changes. Then we have the horizontal zoom, which determines how many channels can be seen on screen at once without having to scroll. If we're only using a few, it may be easier to zoom in. Then we have the audio performance meter. The left zone in the mix console window has the track visibility panel, history panel for mixing changes, and snapshots of our mix console. The simplest place to start with the mix console is probably to jump to the bottom and look at the faders. Starting at the top just above the faders, we can see a marker with the letter C under it. This is the pan control that moves the track from left to right in stereo. Below that are the mute and solo buttons. I keep the direct bass and electric guitar recordings muted. Those are used if I need to go back and reprocess them with a different amp sound after, so they're kept in the project, but I don't want them to be playing back. There's also solo to isolate a track and make it play on its own. Below are the listen and settings buttons for each channel. 
Next, the larger slider underneath is the fader, which adjusts the volume of each channel. Below it is a number for the level the fader is set to, and to the right is the peak level number. We don't want this to get to zero or above, or there will be clipping and distortion, so keep the levels lower. Those should stay as a negative number. Below the fader, there are read and write automation controls that we'll cover in our automation video. We also have the input monitoring and record arm buttons. The two circles below indicate a stereo track, whereas one circle is a mono track. Finally, at the bottom of the track is the track name, and we can rename it by double clicking. Now let's cover the channel racks above. First go to the racks dropdown at the top right and select all of them to view them. There are channel racks for routing, pre, inserts, EQ, strip, sends, cues, direct, quick, and panel. Let's go over each of them. Routing is used to set the track inputs and outputs. Unless we're using a bus or track group, the track output is set to stereo out. The input is the mono or stereo input for an audio interface or a MIDI input for a MIDI controller. The MIDI output will be set to stereo out if it's an instrument track, or if we're using rack instruments, it will be set to a rack instrument on a channel that is listed below the rack instrument name. Those rack instrument channels do not have an input and only have an audio output. The pre-rack gives us high and low cut filter, gain, and phase settings. We can use this to filter out the very high or very low frequencies of a track, or increase the level even more that the fader can. The phase is used if we're recording with multiple microphones at once and need to make sure we're not playing them back out of phase, as that can cause destructive interference of our frequencies, making it sound hollowed out. When we're working with the racks, we need to make sure that the circle in the top left is not yellow. If it's yellow, it means it's bypassed and not affecting the sound. From there, we have to click the power button in the top left of each of the controls, such as the high cut or low cut, and that's what actually enables it, otherwise it won't affect the sound. Inserts are effects that are processed in the signal chain, so a signal goes into an insert and a process signal comes out the other end. We can use a bunch of effects such as compression, equalization, limiters, modulation, delays, and more. The equalizers rack gives us four bands of parametric EQ with a gain control, frequency, and Q. We also have a high and low shelf and a high and low pass filter. With the EQ, when we open it, we can already see it has shown where we have applied the pre-high and low cuts in the pre-rack above. Similar to the pre-rack, we need to make sure the EQ is enabled and not yellowed for the bypass in the top left, and turn on each of the controls with their individual power buttons. Then we can see on the graph that we're cutting or boosting certain frequencies, and we can hear it on playback. Channel Strip contains a built-in noise gate, compressor, and equalizer. Next are sends, which require a little bit more discussion, so we'll cover those in their own video next on the channel. The last tools here are for cues for the control room and direct routing to create different mixes. Quick panel can be used to show a control from a plugin, and the panel can be used to see insert effects panels without having to open them up. That covers how to use the mix console and set up insert effects and the channel strip in Cubase 12. Thanks for checking out this video on the mix console in Cubase 12. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications whenever new videos are released. You can also check the video description for links to our social media accounts to keep up with all our new content.